Now let us look into the properties of the non pre-stressing steel. The properties can be obtained from the stress strength relationship as presented in the figure here. The y axis represents the stress while the x axis represents the strength. The stress is determined by dividing the forces per cross sectional area while the strength is obtained from the elongations divided by its original length. The curve here is known as the stress strength curve and this is a typical stress strength curve for non pressing steel when subjected to an incremental tensile load. The stress strength curve can be divided into several stages which include the elastic stage, yield point, plastic stage, ultimate state and also fractured. During the elastic stage, the strength develops proportionally to the increase of the stress, which means the elongations of the steel responding to the force applied is proportional, as presented with the straight line of the curve. The gradient of this straight line would represent the modulus of elasticity or Young modulus. This modulus is important for us to predict the response of the steel and for the design of the reinforced concrete structure and also the pre-stressed concrete structures. The design strength of the non pressing steel should range within this elastic stage. It is so that the properties of the steel is predictable. The proportional response ends at the yield point. Starting from the yield point, plastic response takes place. There will be a non-linear response of the strain versus the stress. At this stage, a significant strain is developed with respect to small increment of the stress. The load resisting property at this stage is not as good as the elastic stage. And the response at the plastic stage here can vary significantly between different samples. In another word, the response of the steel after the yield point is hardly predictable. With that, normally we do not like to design a structures to this stage. At the plastic state, the highest point of the curve will be considered as the ultimate strength. This point here divides the plastic stage into two, which is known as the strength hardening and necking. The strength hardening is the stage after the yield strength until the ultimate state. Although with low stiffness, this stage still contribute a small degree of strength to the sample. However, after the ultimate state, some part of the sample will endure necking, where the cross section of the steel bar reduces and it is noticeable by our naked eyes. The necking ended at the fracture, where the steel bar break into half. For the advanced manufacturing technologies, consistency of the non pressing steel is more or less ensured, and they always follow these stages of the stress strain response. 
It is noted that for the non-prefacing steel, there are two types, which are the hot raw steel and cold work steel. The hot raw steel normally have a sharp turning as to represent the yield strength. However, for the cold work steel, the yield point is not that obvious. The turning point is not as sharp as the hot raw steel. With that, the yield point is determined by offsetting the gradient of the elastic stage by 0.2% strength. The intersection between this offset line and the curve here will represent the yield point. So this is how the yield points are determined by two types of the steel. In definitions of the Euro code, the U point is determined by FYK here or F0.2K. The K here represents the characteristic strength with at least 95% confidence level and the ultimate stress of the steel in definitions of Eurocode will be determined by a ratio of K times the U point. The K here is a ratio of the ultimate tensile load divided by the U strength. In the design of the non-pre-stressing steel for the Eurocode, an idealized model is being assumed which is developed on the basis of the actual stress strain response. The gradient here represents the modulus of elasticity, which is about 200 kN per mm square. From the diagram here, there are basically two idealized curves of the stress strain response. The curve A represents the idealized response of the non processing steel, while the curve B represents the design response of the non processing steel. This will be the U point, and the design U point will be here. It is determined by dividing the U point with the factor of safety of the steel. The ultimate strength will be determined by K times the U point, which the K is obtained from this formula. As for the design response, there are two assumptions. The first assumption is with an inclined top branch, and the second assumption with the horizontal line after the design U strength. If this assumption is being adopted, there will be a strength limit, which is the epsilon UD, and the maximum stress will be equals to K times FYK divided by factor of safety of the steel at this point. Where else, if the assumption of the horizontal line is adopted, there will not be any strength limits. Either one will be applicable. If you wish to go for a more economical design, you can use this. Well, if you want to go for a more conservative design, you can use this.